Today, we'll take a look at seven different ways to write CSS, specifically in a React app using Next.js. But most importantly, we'll look at the trade-offs of each approach so you can decide what's best for your project. Now let's talk about CSS. Here I have a pristine Next.js app, and the most primitive way to style it is to create global CSS that applies to the entire application. That might work okay for a small application, but it doesn't scale well at all. The first problem you'll run into is that naming things gets really hard because CSS cascades. To address this, you'll likely need to use a naming convention like BEM, but it's not going to be very fun. It's hard to do perfectly, and you'll probably end up using important everywhere because you've got more important things to do than figure out how to not use important. The other problem is that it generally results in a very large and inefficient CSS bundle. Next.js supports a tool called CSS modules out of the box to address some of these concerns. A CSS module file looks just like regular CSS, but it can be scoped to an individual component, and that means you don't have to worry about name collisions when writing your code. All modules will make your life much easier, but we're still dealing with plain CSS here. And one thing it lacks is programmatic features like loops, functions, mixins, and things like that. The classic way to make CSS better is to use a preprocessor, which allows you to write a different syntax like sass, less, or stylus, then use a compiler to convert that code back into plain CSS. The most popular version is SCSS, which is a superset of plain CSS, allowing you to write regular CSS with additional features on top of it. 